number? Uh, it's uh, KL52390. Have you ever noticed in some old TV shows and movies, they say their phone numbers with letters at the beginning, like KL5? You may know that American phone numbers used to be in that format, but like me, you might have thought that they completely went away sometime in the mid-1960s. That's sort of what the Wikipedia article on this subject implies. But I wondered, why do they sometimes feature phone numbers like this in TV shows set as late as the 90s? I noticed this on a few episodes of Seinfeld, I've had about the midpoint of the series they switched to giving phone numbers rather than KL5, they would give them as 555, for example. But you probably thought that those phone numbers went away decades earlier. So I did some research and I found that there's some detail that the Wikipedia article glosses over that answers this question of why they would use a telephone number format from what I thought was the 1960s on a show from the mid-90s. Well, it turns out the letter prefix system stuck around a lot longer than you might think. When telephones first came out, all calls were placed by name. That meant that when you wanted to place a call, you'd need help from an operator. Here's how it worked. You'd pick up the phone, get connected to the operator, and then you'd tell the operator by name who you want to call. Then the operator would ask you to hold and went and looked up the number for that person's line. The operator would then come back on the line, tell you you're about to be connected, and then they'd plug the line in to a connector on the switchboard labeled with that number. And obviously that's too complex to scale up as more and more people got phone subscriptions. So they came up with phone numbers and automatic dialing so a, a human operator didn't have to be involved. At least not as much. But if you wanted to call another city, you still needed to call the operator and ask to be connected manually. This demonstration will show the procedures and techniques used in dialing. The ticket is placed near the dial so that the routing directions and the call number can be seen readily. The operator knows 216 is the code for Cleveland. That meant that phone numbers only had to be unique to a local phone company's area. It didn't matter if there were a subscriber in New York City and San Francisco with the same number, because if someone in New York City wanted to call San Francisco, they'd have to go through the operator. This meant that phone numbers could be shorter than we used to today. Here's a real phone number that you could dial within New York City as a local call. Here's the modern 10-digit plus country code format. Because of cell phones and online calling and all sorts of things, the way it works now is more complicated than this. But here's, in theory, how this number breaks down. The country code is the country you want to call. The area code is the area that you want to call. Those two you probably understand. But the exchange, those three digits, that part of the number used to do the job of the area code. Exchanges were local offices for routing calls. That's where the operator who you would call would be sitting and working. Before area codes and country codes became required dialing, you could connect just by dialing seven digits. This still exists in some smaller areas. Where I live in New Jersey, I remember this being phased out when I was a kid in the 90s. But still, in some areas, if you just dial seven digits, it'll assume that you want to call within your area code and it'll tack that on at the beginning automatically so you don't have to dial it. That's how the letter prefix system worked. You could only dial within your own city, so you only needed seven digits. So the phone company would assign numbers so that the first two digits corresponded with the letters on the dial to spell out the first two letters of a word that would be the name of the neighborhood that you were calling. There's a song from this era, Pennsylvania 65000, which refers to the phone number for the Pennsylvania Hotel, which was right across 7th Avenue from Pennsylvania Station, New York. Because of the station, New York Telephone named that neighborhood Pennsylvania and assigned numbers that began with digits that spelled out P-E for Pennsylvania. So. PE65000 translates to 736-5000, and if you tack on the local area code 212, you get 212-736-5000, which was the phone number for the Pennsylvania Hotel until it closed a few years ago. In the 1960s, New York Telephone first announced that they intended to retire this system of having the first two digits translate to letters that corresponded to the neighborhood. 
but people liked it. There was something cool about having a phone number that showed off where you lived, especially if you lived in a cool neighborhood. There was pushback from locals who were used to the system. New York City was one of the earliest adopters of the telephone, so they'd been using this system for a long time. There were songs about it, like we talked about. As this New York Times article from 1978 bemoans, are no vestiges of status to be left to us. No longer, says the New York Telephone Company, will we be able to drop Butterfield 8 or Rhinelander 4 or Plaza 5 exchanges at parties and expect appreciative stares. No longer will it be apparent when you say Boulevard 3 that you live in the bucolic shadow of the West Side Tennis Club in Forest Hills Gardens. And dry dock country will no longer be distinguished by Region 7. It's all part of the phone company's gradual changeover to seven-digit numbers that began some time ago. The conclusion of Phase 1 will be marked by distribution of the white pages on August 1st. Phase 2, the final phase, will come next February 1st when the next set of yellow pages are given out. Neither volume will contain numbers listed with lettered exchanges. It must be understood, the phone company man said, that people are not getting new numbers, they're just losing their letters. The conversion began about 10 years ago and that about 75% of the city's numbers had already become seven-digit combinations. What's the novelty? He asked. Around the country, 98% of the numbers are all-digit numbers, and outside of the United States, letters are almost unheard of. Because of the increased telephone load, he said, we probably would have run out of numbers, and he suggested that by the 1980s, we may even have to go to more numbers, access numbers, to get from one borough to another. So the system sort of stuck around. Although the phone company could no longer guarantee they'd give out numbers with the same prefix for the neighborhood, you could still use it to remember the number. 736-5000 still dialed the Pennsylvania Hotel. But if you lived in that part of Midtown Manhattan, they couldn't give you a new phone number that began with 73 or PE. So on Seinfeld, they did it this way because that's how New Yorkers did it. The version of New York City that we see on Seinfeld is a mix of the 90s when it was set and the 80s when Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld were living the stories that they would later write into the show. You can see this in how they talk about the subway. Elaine, at one point, remarks that she had to change to the double R at 42nd Street. But you couldn't do that when the show aired in the 90s. New York City Transit discontinued the double R name in the 80s. But like KL5, this remnant of the 80s is in the show. That, more or less, is why they used the lettered prefix format on Seinfeld. KL, or Klondike, was a fictional neighborhood name made up for use in TV and other media. KL, Klondike, corresponded to 55 on the telephone, so KL5 translates to 555. That's why they used it on Seinfeld. It was the fictionalized way to say telephone numbers in the way that they felt was the truest to how they remembered New York City. In fact, you could even see remnants of this in the late 90s. This New York Daily News article from 1997, I like to get the daily news. <laughs> discusses how this pharmacy in Manhattan still advertised their phone number using that system. Want to experience an instant time warp? Have a prescription filled at Wenbar Pharmacy on Manhattan's Upper East Side and the telephone number on your bill will begin with Butterfield E, the exchange made famous by John O'Hara in his novel and later the 1960 movie of the same name. You'd better hurry, though. I love the romance of it, says Murray Gallahu of the telephone exchange that has been a part of his pharmacy for 47 years. But I may have to let it go. Some customers are confused by a telephone number that begins with a word. So that's why they did it. Because letter prefixes stuck around longer than you'd think, especially in major American cities like New York. Hey, thanks for watching my video. Uh, if you like it, you can click the like button and you can subscribe to my channel and you can click the bell. I don't know what any of those things do, but if you do it, your life will be good forever. Uh, so click those things and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.